All right, guys, before we start, before we start, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and more importantly, share. You know, this is why I'm doing this so that people would share and would have as much information as they need to start out. Or if you already know your thing, hey, you know, it's uh, sharing is caring. Spread the love. Hey, what's up? It's Kit, Time for another video. And today we're going to talk about fishing lines. And this is quite a big topic to tackle. And believe it or not, my goodness, I had to actually make a list for this because there's just a lot. And I know that the list is not exhausted. It's just that big of a topic but hopefully i didn't i didn't skip uh the most important bits so let's start again the first five minutes would be for the guys that are in a hurry and if you stick around after five minutes you will have a, a deeper explanation on things and let's start three main uh lines that are in use these days would be braid which is Practically what a lot of people, or if not all, everyone is using here in Dubai. Monofilament and another type of monofilament, which is copolymer. Now, this is in an old reel, but we'll talk more about that later. So mono and braid. And if you get to choose which one to start with, for starters, I mean, for me, you should start with mono. Now, it's not because braid doesn't have a lot of advantages, but... What a lot of people don't know about braid is that because there's very little stretch, it magnifies mistakes as well. Mono tends to absorb all the mistakes, especially for fishing like trolling, where everything matters and the uh, mistakes could be something that would be uh, kind of devastating. I mean, you could have uh, fingers cut with tight braid, especially the thick ones. But for overall, when you're fishing with mono, it is much more forgivable than braid okay now there's a lot of types of lines in use today all of them cutting edge okay so there's as i mentioned copolymer there is hyper copolymer which is new from suffix of course there's braid and there's different types of braid there is fluorocarbon and all of these are great they have their own place and time okay now there are different types of braid what you need to know is number one get the right braid for your fishing reel it has to fit okay if you're going towards mono it's the same thing but always note that reels will have the range of line here what this tells you is just an indication it's really not something that uh is super set in stone so which means that this 2500 is rated for mono that is eight so i you can spool six four and what i have here is four pound test line it just it's just a guide okay but it gives you a good indication of how much line you can put in and a rough idea of probably like take for example if you jump from eight to ten it'll give you a rough idea that at ten you'd have less than 140 yards or probably even 120 or just 100 yards for 10 pounds okay and for four you'd probably hit in the neighborhood of uh, 200 yards or more in this case because that it's yardage here okay so u.s models would tend to have pounds listed whereas japanese models would have meters european models as well will have meters okay so like this one it says that i have 115 meters of 0.14 diameter line or about 100 meters of three pound test mono it's rated for mono but i put braid again it's a rough uh, estimate of capacities the only sure thing as far as capacities go is that when you load the line you go if there's a shop that you could go to to load line they can measure it for you. Always remember to spool spool the reels correctly with the amount of line so that you will not have a lot of issues, especially for casting. Braid will give you the most distance. The most abrasion resistance would be from copolymer and fluorocarbon. However, there are newer types of mono that would also give you a lot of abrasion resistance. Mono will stretch about 30% or more fluorocarbon, believe it or not, stretches more. 
but it takes more force to actually stretch it. Braid stretches. Just the fibers of the braid alone have a 2% stretch on them, but we'll talk more about that later on. Fluorocarbon lines have the same, almost same specific gravity as water. So in theory, they kind of disappear. Now I have a leader line here, but uh, one thing to note about fluorocarbon is that they're kind of stiff. That's why there are some manufacturers that manufacture castable fluorocarbon, okay? Again, there's different types of braid and each manufacturer actually has their own way of braiding and that's proprietary for each and every single one of them. There is no governing body as far as fishing lines are concerned, which means that it's not standardized, okay? So that's five minutes. If you guys are still around, let's take a deep dive. So as mentioned, fishing lines, okay, they are not standardized. And one manufacturer could have, say, a diameter of line for a particular breaking strain. And if you move to another manufacturer, it's different. One thing to note is that American braids are thicker and are severely underrated than their European or Japanese and especially their Japanese counterparts. Okay. Now. There's a thing to say about when you look at the label, some actually indicate test or class. Class lines are tournament fishing lines where they have strict guidelines on breaking strains. Okay, so when you see a class line, it means it will break before or at the breaking strain rated. Whereas test lines, such as the most common fishing lines, and I don't have class lines here with me, they break on or after the rated breaking strain. Braid severely over tests. So like take for example, we have a six pound line here. This is six pound braid. This is same stuff you see here. Okay. Now it says six, six pounds or three kilos. It's not going to break six pounds or three kilos. It's going to break over. Okay. Suffix advanced hypercopolymer. This is quite interesting and uh, I've tried these kind of like them actually because they're quite unique okay now the reason why we're talking about this is because it is a cross between monofilament and braid because suffix advance has uh hmpe fibers or hmpe molecules inside the mono so quite a very quite a unique line and uh the result of that is that it actually stretches less so that's why suffix calls it the mono that thinks it's a braid. Braid, when you say braid, there's many different braids, okay? So this is braid, this is braid, okay? So when you say braided line, it doesn't really mean that it is this, okay? This is what you call HMPE braid, okay? That's high modulus polyethylene. This, my friends, is a braided line. As you can see there, this is called Dacron. Okay, so in the age where fishing lines were still monofilament, or that's the most popular, okay, Dacron was actually used mostly on saltwater fishing as fishing line. Okay, you could pretty much do ev almost everything you could do with uh, PE lines with braid, like the uh, splicing, the practice of splicing PE lines right now when you're making uh, assist hooks actually came from splicing Dacron, okay? And Dacron was heavily used in uh, big game saltwater fishing for marlin and all that. They usually come in uh, this color. It's all, it's white or sometimes it's uh, brown, light brown. And this one it has like dots in it. And the old, very old school um, actually still have some use they don't rot and they don't get affected with uv as uh, much as mono so what the primary use for this this these before was actually what braid is being used in in offshore fishing now is backing okay and then you splice some line on there and the uh, other uses is that you make a loop out of this and put in the mono and then these actually become your connection to another uh, your main line actually then that's called a wind on leader so that's Dacron okay now fluorocarbon sinks sorry I don't have the uh, box for this but this is an, uh, an old reel but I know that I spooled copolymer on this one so copolymer 
is nothing but two types of nylon. What do you call this? Uh, they are blended together to bring a uh, balance of abrasion resistance stretch. Okay, so the good qualities, they, they kind of mix together two different types of polymers or nylon and come up with a totally different line that's kind of stronger, less stretchy. Okay, abrasion, more abrasion resistant than traditional straight poly, uh, single strand polymer or uh, single strand mono. Okay, so copolymer sinks. So does fluorocarbon, something you need to uh, keep in mind. Now, fluorocarbon. Just the thing is that it's very popular for fishing uh, largemouth bass in the U.S. And there are a lot of ultralight applications for this. So when you're fishing for fish in very shallow water, I usually use fluorocarbon like that, actually. Straight fluorocarbon. This is six pound right here. And what I do is I don't put any sort of connection uh, like a link or a uh, snap. And it's just straight for fluorocarbon. Uh, it's not for really long casts because although the diameters are quite small, it still doesn't cast as far as braid. But what it gives you is really ultimate stealth. And that is where this shines. Okay. Now the thinnest I have here is actually mono. Now this is 1.2 kg or 2.75 pounds. It's really, really thin. And... Either I use this on a reel or I use it for leaders. So when there is a need for me to use really, really thin lines, and there are applications for this, especially when you're casting really tiny one gram jigs. I like this better or sub one gram jigs. And I don't need to cast far, but I need a lot of stealth. And when it's really, really tough, I bust out a reel with this line and it usually produces. Okay. Um, I think it was last year when Suffix actually, I mean, okay, this is a prototype spool, but this was actually, uh, this is four pound test. It's clear. It's 300 meters. I haven't used it yet. This is advanced fluorocarbon and this is practically the best fluorocarbon you can get. And it's castable. Uh, the best fluorocarbon line that you could get right now. It is quite thin for a four pound mono. And, uh, if I can get away this, if, if there is some big fish around, okay, I have one reel spooled with it, actually one spool spooled with this. And if the fishing is really tough, but there's some bigger fish around that I know I'd probably get in trouble with if I'm fishing this really uh, thin line, this is what I go with. Now, um, some interesting points is that there's only one braid, okay, that actually breaks in the test that it actually mentions on the spool okay so i don't have it here but there's only one you could google it and uh it's quite interesting because they've someone has actually manufactured braid that breaks on or before the the breaking strain indicated now i want to show you actually not this one but these two these two are quite unique because they're not straight braid okay this one has uh, eight braided fibers. This one has 13. That's not unique. What's unique is that one strand. Okay. So there's seven braids that go in that intertwine. And then there's one that spirals around and it's a gore fiber. And what it does is actually make it really abrasion resistant because the gore fiber there is actually the one that takes the punishment. Now for this one, the gore fiber is actually inside and there's 12 strands of braid running around it. And what that gives you is a super, super round braid. If I know you guys can't really see this, but this braid is so round. It's amazing. So the rounder the braid, the easier it is to actually cast. Okay. And how it moves, it's kind of like you're using mono, but not really. It's, 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 uh, you have to try it. This is something that I use in a lot of reels. Okay. The 832. Because... It also slowly sinks and it's the same thing as the 131. The thing with 832 or well, the thing with braid in general is that most braids, except for those two, actually don't sink. They, they float. It's like mono. Mono floats. Okay. So in certain applications, you want that. However, since braid is kind of like the most used 
line around here in the Middle East. You have to be aware that there is some resistance with braid when it's, you know, just to sink it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Sometimes, especially when you are ultralight fishing, okay, there will be some effect, especially when you're casting far out, okay? And, and remember, we're dealing with really tiny lures. Now, for, for braid, yes, it sinks, but it does, it kind of forms a belly, okay? So when you cast, it goes like that, okay? Whereas with monofilament, it would just go straight, okay? So there's a difference there, especially when you're presenting to very finicky fish, takes a bit of time to actually pull that slack out. Okay, whereas with mono and fluorocarbon and copolymer, when you cast out, there's very little to tighten, okay, because they straighten out. Whereas with braid, it has this belly and it takes some time. Now, why this matters? Because when you cast and the fish strikes, even if the, the braid has no stretch and you actually feel the pickup, sometimes you set the hook and the fish is not there because all you're doing is actually taking out the slack. So always be mindful when you're casting, reel in slowly or do what I do. I put really, really long leaders. That way I don't have to deal with a lot of the belly. So quite a good tip there. All right. So um, braid stretches. Okay. Not a lot of people know that braid actually stretches. It does. Now the, just the fibers alone, just the fibers alone, it has a 2% stretch. Now you're telling me maybe like, hey, hey kid, you know what? That kind of doesn't matter. But when you're fishing extreme depths and if you're just looking at 2% stretch and I'm, we're going to dive deeper on this when I talk about, uh, jigging, like offshore jigging. Okay. But your own, if we only talk about the 2% stretch and you're fishing 200 meters, that is actually about four meters, four meters of line, line stretch. Okay. So yes, that matters. So it's good to know that yes, they stretch and you have to do something to actually take out that stretch. Braided line, there's different types. So you'll see that this is just one color and you'll already know that it's for casting. Now I'm gonna get a uh, line here. Okay, this one is metered line. So there's different colors and this one's for jigging. Now, yeah, something you have to understand with braid and this is w actually why I got this. Now, see, this is brand new line. As you can see, there's a uh, different difference in color. Okay, now this is not because the line is bad. Okay, this is actually uh, actually kind of relatively new. But the property of braid in general, the fiber and the material itself, is that almost nothing sticks to it. Okay, so with jigging lines, and, and mind you, when you actually go to a shop and compare jigging lines and casting lines, there is a price difference. Okay. And the reason for that is because casting line actually takes a lot more effort to coat because for casting, you need the coating to be very slick so that it goes in and out of your guides with less friction. Whereas with jigging line, Companies don't really have to code it as much because all you're doing is just dropping and going up. Okay, so the coating on jigging lines, the process. Okay, so if like take for example, they're coating this five times for jigging line, they're probably just coating it two or three times. And you know, the effort and the work that, that goes into just coating it is the process is not only time consuming, but it's also not easy. And this is the reason why jigging line and casting line have this price this uh, price difference. Now, can you use one for the other? Of course. Other than the coating, there's really no difference between both of them. And that's the reason why sometimes you'll see some of my reels that I use for casting have jigging line. Because it really doesn't matter. It's just the difference in coating. Okay? Well, you know, if you're... if the reason why you want the coded line is because you want the distance, right? And this is what it gives you. But if uh, you don't really care much for that, or if the, you you have 
um, nothing else to use. Of course, you know, why not, right? All right, so um, braid is approximately 30% thinner than equivalent mono. And here's a very interesting thing here. So this is Dacron and it is 50 pound test. This is braid and you can see that they're almost the same size. But this is double the capacity of this. Now, for mono, okay, you have, let's say you compare this with a 30 pound test. It's about the same thickness, but it's this strong. So it's a few times stronger, the same, same diameter mono, okay? Um, mono has a lot of memory. What that means is that if you take mono and you put it in the spool like this, or in your reel, okay? Actually, we can demo it here, and this is the reason why I took it here in the first place. So you can see that it's actually taking that shape right there. Okay, so it's there's coils, see? It's coiled. So mono has a property that, you know, it has memory. Now, copolymer has less of it. Uh, fluorocarbon has less of it. Braid has none of it. And the good thing about braid also is that you won't have as much problems with line twist than with mono or any other line. Now, here's a very good trivia, actually. So, especially with mono, you get this, okay? So, what happens when the line is going out, okay? And this is something that you have to watch out for because after a while, it will affect your braid. And this will probably actually explain a lot of bust-offs for a few people. Uh, especially with thinner braid, okay? So this is why I'm bringing this up. Now, when the fish is running, okay? So you hear your drag going, and then you reel, okay? What this, what a spinning reel does is actually twist the line. And the reel's not, the, the line's not moving, it's going out, okay? Because the fish is running. But whenever you hear that sound, and you're reeling, it's gonna introduce twist to your fishing line. Now, this is different because bait casters don't have that problem. And irregardless of you using mono, copolymer, dacron, braid, or PE, any sort of fishing line. When this, when the fish is running, okay, you see, the spool is not turning. So another advantage of the bait caster versus spinning is that you don't introduce line twist to your fishing line. So the reason why we're calling them PE is because it's a shortcut of HMPE. That is high modulus polyethylene. So the, the material is HMPE. Now, when you look, it says PE.4. Now, the reason why the Japanese are actually, or the reason why the Japanese are actually labeled it as that is because it's polyethylene and then the diameter. Now the diameter that it's it mentions here, it is not the size per se. What it is, is a unit of measurement that they have used since ancient times. How ancient? It's actually a measurement for silk. Okay, so the 0.4 numbering, the 1.5, okay, that's brought about from the silk trade. Just a little fun trivia. Now, here's something very important because this is something that um, a lot of people actually don't realize. Okay, so braid, this is a very good example here. Now, we're, we're gonna have to zoom in. When you cast, when you retrieve, when you're jigging, whatever motion, the braid actually moves, okay? Now, with this one, you can see it goes like that. Okay, so the braid, do you see that? I hope I hope you see it, but the braid actually kind of bunches up like that. It's doing that microscopically and it's actually what it does is it rubs against each other. And when braid rubs against each other, there's damage, okay? So, like take for example, you have two lines rubbing against each other. It's the same thing. But there, it's do it's doing that microscopically, and this is one of the advantages of this line right here. In even A32, okay, because 
it has one fiber of gore. And what it does is it absorbs all that rubbing. Okay, 131 is able to do it from the inside. 832 is doing it because of the braiding. So that's another big advantage of these lines. So that's definitely something that you should think about when you're choosing lines because sometimes you think that everything is okay because the braid is really tough. The problem there is that there are times that you don't see it. Okay, now another big thing that always worries me is when you're fishing. A lot of people don't pay attention to this, but here, especially in the Middle East, it's very applicable. So take for example, this is the drop you're fishing and you're here. Okay, you cast out, it goes way over and you're when you retrieve, okay, when you retrieve, your line's actually going this way. There's two ways to avoid it. Okay, one way is to get a really long rod so that your line is like that, okay, when you retrieve. But if you have a shorter rod, you will hit the sand. And what sand does is not abrade your line that way. It's abrading it lengthwise, okay? So one very, very big thing is that if you're fishing sand, please look at your line. Okay, you have to check your line and see. And you can see that kind of damage because I actually have a leader there and I used that really thin line. Okay, so this is what was left. Now, you have to check your braid. Okay, so you can see, really long. Okay, so you have to check your braid and, and inspect it in bright light. And what happens is that your braid, okay, when you when you look at it through the light, and it, it, you could only see it when it's really bright. So if your braid is like this and then there's some some fiber sticking out, okay? I, I call that, personally, I call, it, call that cottoning up. So if it starts to cotton up, okay? What you do is look for the section, uh, go through that and look for the section where, where it's clear, okay? Where there's none of that. Because, again, especially when you're ultralight fishing, that will will really put a dent on some uh, some catches now uh i'm telling you all this from experience and not a lot of people actually care to uh check that when it matters the most especially with ultralight fishing and you're you're you know you see a big fish you're sight casting you see a big fish and then your braid snaps just because you didn't really inspect it it's a bummer and I, that happened to me a few times before I realized that it was actually the lateral abrasion that was causing it. So always be careful. Braid is bulletproof. Yes. Okay. Now, um, one fiber that we haven't spoken about is aramid. Now, aramid is, to a lot of people, it's Kevlar. Okay. So aramid fibers are tough, but they're stiff. Okay. Now, Bulletproof vests were actually thick, or even law enforcement. You go around before, you could see that law enforcement bulletproof vests were thick. And the whole reason why it's thin now, body armor, is because they're actually using the same material. So literally, when you say that this is bulletproof, it really is. So the um, even if it's bulletproof, okay, it's still susceptible to abrasion. And this is... This is what you got to do every time you go fish before the session take some line out especially after your leader and it usually happens at about uh, two three meters and if you see within the first two three meters all you have to do is just strip the line until you find a place where it is looking like it's brand new sometimes uh heavy damage like that is actually uh well quite of a big of a big problem because sometimes it's it gets to the middle and you don't even know you don't realize and that's something that well it's a bummer but what you could do is actually take all of that line put mono on top of that take put that to another reel and then reel it into another reel until you have the mono on top and once you have the mono on top you reel it into your main reel and what happens is that the braid would be on top 
Okay, so that's a spooling trick that I use. And if you have that, you buy a, like take for example, it has a capacity of 300 meters, just in theory, okay? So you have 100 meters of braid on top and 200 meters of mono on the bottom and it saves you. So one 300 meter spool of braid could be chopped up into like three spools. Now, 100 meters on really thin line is already a lot and more than likely you won't even see the backing. So just another another tip for you. Obviously, you can use also old braid or uh, thicker braid, you know, so that will save you a ton of money. Now, uh, one last thing. This is very applicable for heavy braid, but when it's in tension, when there's tension, like take for example, uh, there's big fish, it could cut fingers, okay? And that's not something that you want to do. So when you're, especially when you're handling uh, fish both sides, be very, very careful. And uh, that's uh, something that you need to always keep in mind. Now, when I'm fishing offshore, I always have a knife with me and I, I have to know where the knife is because if something goes south, I could just cut. And uh, that's probably one of the biggest things that you should always, always keep in mind. All right, so... Um, I guess that's it. I think I've covered most of the points that I wanted to tackle. So, guys, it's up to you which one you choose, okay? Now, for me, uh, majority of the time I use braid. However, there are certain times where I'm forced to use different types of monos, okay? So, it's still very applicable and there's always a, a time and place for them. Uh, this particular one, believe it or not, I use night fishing because it's highly visible. And at night, I just put a short leader on this and uh, off I go. And I, I tie it in straight so I, I can still see exactly where my lure is or at least where my line is just to give me an indication of where things are, especially when it's kind of dark. So always something good to so if you can see your... Uh, your, your fishing line and where your lure is at. All right, so guys, bit longer than uh, I actually expected it to be. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something. So if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell button. That's the notification button so that each time I publish these videos, you'll get notified by YouTube. All right, so again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.